One of the big concerns about retirement is running out of money and even what seems like a large pension pot can dwindle rapidly without careful money management. So here we're going to look at ways to make your retirement income last longer. In this video we're going to cover three steps to help you plan your retirement income and make that retirement income last longer. And for those of you who do not know how much you need to save for retirement then do go and check out the pension income planning series which I've linked in the description below. The videos in the pension income planning series show you how much income different size pension pots may generate and whilst we live in this high inflation environment knowing how much you need to save for retirement is really important. High inflation environments may also mean that whilst you may have been planning for a comfortable retirement and saving towards that goal because of high inflation you may find that your retirement income will then only provide you with a more basic standard of living. So knowing ways to make your money last longer in retirement is really important. So the first step is income planning. I know many people like to avoid this and just drift towards retirement hoping that their pension will take care of itself but that can lead to an unpleasant surprise when they finally do take notice of their pension and try to understand what it all means and they may find they haven't actually saved up anywhere near enough to provide them with the retirement income they would like. Even the word pension can make people panic and put their head in the sand because they don't understand them. Here on this channel I try to explain things in simple terms to make it easy for everyone to understand. And working out how much income you need for retirement is actually quite easy. And that all comes down to mapping out your spending habits and working out what your essential bills are and what your non-essential expenses are. And being as accurate as you can is really important using real data. So get out your bank statements and credit card statements and work out how much you actually spend and on different types of categories. I've done a whole video on retirement income planning which I've linked in the description below for more information. There are also useful tools you could use like this Hargreaves Lansdowne calculator which I've also put in the description below. When you are filling in spreadsheets like this to work out your retirement income need and understand your expenses, by the time you get to retirement if you are buying your house you're likely to have paid off your mortgage so you would not include your mortgage payment within your calculations. And once you deduct your monthly mortgage payment from your expenses you may find that you don't actually need a large income to cover the basics. So you could use a calculator like this to do scenario planning for retirement and that will help you work out how much income you will need to fund the retirement lifestyle you'd like. And this exercise is really important even outside of retirement planning because if you know what your monthly expenses are for both essential and non-essential spending it can really help you budget and work out where you can actually save money. Once you know how much retirement income you are likely to need you can then do a simple sum to give you an indicative amount of money you need to save for retirement using the 4% rule or maybe more wisely in this high inflation environment you could use the 3% rule. So if you say you need an annual income of around £16,000 a year in retirement and that's before tax, the 4% rule would be 16,000 times 25 and that means you'd need a pension pot of £400,000 or in that kind of ballpark. Or if you want to go for the 3% rule because we're living in this high inflation environment then you'd do 16,000 times by 33 and that suggests you'd need a pension pot size in the region of £528,000. These figures are not a certainty but they do provide you with a good guide for how much money you need to save to generate the income you need. Now these are large pension pot sizes but don't panic just yet because you need to factor in your state pension as well and that will bring down the amount you need to save by quite a lot. Assuming of course that you're going to retire at state pension age. So now we're going to deduct the full state pension from the retirement income goal of £16,000 in this example and then work out how much money we'd need to save for retirement in order to provide the income of £16,000 a year whilst factoring in that state pension. And of course we're using the full state pension here but you may not necessarily qualify for the full state pension so do be aware of that. So here we're seeking a target retirement income of £16,000 a year and we're going to deduct the full state pension that will be paid from April 2020 of this year which is 9,627. So that means you've got an income gap to bridge of £6,373 
in order to achieve that target retirement income of £16,000. So now if we take the 6,373, which is the income you need your pension to generate, and we times that by 25 using the 4% rule, that means we'd need to save about £159,000 in our pension savings in order to generate that amount of money. And that combined with the state pension would give us an income of around £16,000 a year. Using the 3% rule, we take the £6,373 that you need to generate, times that by 33, which means we'd need to be saving in the region of £210,000 in our pension pot in order to generate that income to give us an overall income of £16,000. These figures are just an illustration, so you'd need to work out how much you'd need to save in your pension pot in order to generate the retirement income you need, taking into account that state pension. You can also see from these simple calculations that you do need to have quite large pension pot savings to generate quite a modest level of income. And with the high inflation environment at the moment, I'd be more inclined to go for the 3% rule as a guide for how much I'd need to save rather than the more traditional 4% rule. Also for the more risk averse, then you may be more inclined to buy an annuity with your pension savings because that would help you sleep better at night and keep you away from all the volatility of the markets. Annuity rates are currently at all time lows, but these rates are only relevant to people who are looking to buy annuities at the present time. Annuity rates may be very different in the future and more favourable. But even with annuity rates being really low in the here and now, they do provide you with that guaranteed income and they remove the risk of you running out of money in retirement. So it all becomes a bit of a trade-off. For those happy to manage their investments and draw their retirement income through drawdown, then do not fall into the trap of dividing your pension pot by the number of years you expect to live during retirement. That puts you on the road potentially of running out of money because you're not factoring in the volatility of the markets. And the volatility of the stock market can really affect your retirement income and it all depends on when the downside volatility would hit your pension savings. So a stock market crash early in your drawdown period could really hurt your finances and leave you with less money in retirement. A stock market crash towards the latter period of your retirement would have less of an impact. This chart here shows an illustration of poor stock market performance in the early years of the contributing phase, so that is during the years when you're saving into your pension. And those are shown by the grey bars in this chart. And that is plotted against poor performance in the stock market occurring during the latter stages of you saving into your pension, and that's shown by the gold bars. The chart suggests that the impact of the worst performance years, shown here in grey, is less when it occurs during the early stages of accumulation. And the portfolio compounds to a considerably higher value compared to when the worst performing years occur during the latter part of the accumulation phase, which is shown in gold. Now to look at the drawdown phase, and this chart shows the poor stock market performance in the early years of the withdrawal phase, shown in grey, against poor performance in the latter phase of drawdown, shown in gold. Here data shows that where the worst performance years occurred during the early stages of drawdown, and also remember you're taking money out of your pension for an income as well during this period, the pension pot size suffered more compared with poor performance occurring during the latter phase of drawdown. When the poor performance occurred in the latter stages of retirement in this scenario shown, the pension pot benefited from growth due to strong market returns in the early phase of retirement, despite retirement income actually being taken out of the pension pot as well. So poor stock market returns in the latter phase of drawdown were less of an impact, and these impacts upon your pension pot savings if you do want to do drawdown really need to be taken into account and do some stress testing on your pension pot to make sure your drawdown rate is sustainable. And if you're doing drawdown, then maybe a good rule is to take no more than the natural yield. So this is where maybe taking a 3% drawdown rate comes into play again, and that gives your money much better chance of keeping up with the rate of inflation while still invested in the stock market during the drawdown phase. The second tip is to maximise your retirement savings. When you're saving up for retirement, you may then find that you have income coming from different sources when you do actually reach retirement. So that will take some adjusting to, particularly if you've only been used to having one source of income during your working life. 
So when you retire, you may find that you've got income coming in from different avenues. So your income streams may include your state pension, an income from a defined benefit pension annuity, income from a defined contribution pension annuity, drawdown income, withdrawals you're taking from ISA savings to provide you with an income, and you may have other sources of income coming in as well. So all these different income streams may seem a bit overwhelming, and this is where budgeting comes in, knowing when your money is coming in each month and how much, and also working on your cash flow, because the money may hit your account at different dates in the month. So this is one of the reasons why many people may look to consolidate their pensions so that they can reduce the number of different income streams coming in each month to make it easier to manage their money. For those of you with ISA savings, that's a great way for maximising your retirement income and minimising the amount of income tax you have to pay during retirement. So you can use your ISA savings quite cleverly to either keep you below the tax threshold altogether or to keep you in the lower tax band. So you could be using withdrawals from your ISA account to top up your retirement income and that money is tax free that you take out from your ISA. So you can use it effectively to keep your taxes as low as possible during retirement. And the less income tax you have to pay during retirement, then the more money you get to keep and it reduces the risk of you running out of money when you are in retirement. As you approach retirement, it's also useful if you have a defined contribution pension scheme to start thinking about how you're going to draw your retirement income. Think about whether drawdown is suitable for you. Are you confident in managing your own money invested in the stock market? Or would you prefer to buy an annuity where you get that guaranteed income? These are important decisions that's best to start thinking about before you actually reach retirement so that you don't make rash decisions when you do actually retire. Of course, you could do a combination of drawdown and annuity as well. So you may want to take just a small annuity to cover your essential bills on top of your state pension and then do drawdown for the rest of your retirement income. Lastly, we'll take a look at income investing. Some people decide to invest in the stock market to generate an income. You will notice that some investment funds are called accumulating whilst other are called income. And it is those income funds that actually pay that income into your bank account rather than reinvesting the dividends, like what happens with accumulating funds. You can look at the dividend yield of a fund to see what kind of income you may get from investing in that fund, but the dividend yield is no guarantee that you will always get that kind of rate of return. For those who want to do income investing, then don't necessarily go for funds which have the highest dividend yield, and that is because the high dividend yields also mean that they are riskier investments and also likely to be more volatile and downside volatility is the bad side of investing. Dividend yields of between 2 and 4% are usually seen as good, and some people like to look between 4 and 6%, but again, that all comes down to your own personal attitude to risk. And remember, dividend yield isn't the only indicator you should look at when choosing your investments. There are other metrics to look at as well. For example, in other videos, we've looked at the price to earnings ratio, and in recent videos, we've also looked at the three-year sharp and the three-year alpha ratios. As a quick reminder, the three-year sharp ratio, a ratio of less than one is considered bad, from one to 1.99, adequate to good, two to 2.99, very good, and greater than three is excellent. And the higher a fund sharp ratio, the better its returns have been relative to the amount of investment risk taken on. And with the three-year alpha, an alpha of greater than zero means an investment has outperformed after adjusting for volatility. And when hedge managers talk about high alpha, they're usually saying that their managers are good enough to outperform the market. So for example, an alpha of 3% suggests that an investment's return over that three year period was 3% better than the market during that same period when compared to a suitable market index. If you want to generate your retirement income from using the income investing strategy, then it may be a good idea to start moving your money over into income funds as you approach retirement. And that way you can start getting used to the amount of income you get paid on a regular basis. And that can help you do the acid test as to whether that strategy is right for you. Remember, income you get from income investing is not guaranteed and the amount you get could fluctuate. And what you get in one year is no guarantee of what you will get in the next. So the risk of running out of money during retirement is very real, particularly for those who go down the drawdown route. 
So do plan your pension income carefully to help you avoid those pitfalls. Well, I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching.